everyone this is three questions with matt woods got music man you know that? hey matt and i were just talking and I, i'm i'm really excited to have we actually i was on his podcast last week so we're just like best friends. We're just hanging best out every day. Like, what are we gonna do next week? I don't know, right? It's kind of funny. Exactly. <laughs> so hey Matt, thanks, thanks for uh thanks for uh being on the podcast and just kind of looking at your Twitter bio and just getting to know you. Like you are very accomplished. You've done incredible stuff, right? And I just absolutely sure. so inspired to uh be able to have this time to connect with you. And I know a lot of people are gonna resonate uh with what you have to share. So when you think about your career and just all the accomplishments that you have. But then you think about, you know, some of your own teachers, who's a teacher that you think of um, who really inspired you and why? Man, that's a great question. Um, it's a couple that come to mind. Um, first, it was uh, one of my social studies teachers um, back in the day when I was in high school, uh, Mr. Mark Hatcher. Uh, so if he's listening, shout out Mr. Hatcher. Um, he was such, a, he's just, first off, he's just a good person just a good guy, good person. But he always had this calm demeanor about himself. He was just always just so smooth, so cool. Like you never saw him get worked up. Actually, I take that back. He got worked up one time because somebody was acting a fool in the hallway. And I thought he was about to jump out of his shirt. Like we had never seen him upset. Right. Um, but he was just, like I said, he was just, first off, he's just such a good guy because he built a lot he built relationships and he cared and he didn't have to tell you he cared it was just the way his right. actions his gestures um and he just made the class fun and exciting um so he was one and then the other one um was actually a college professor that i had dr marianne norman um to this day still the hardest teacher i had um the, the, the level of rigor and expectation she had for us was just unreal. But she was another one. She was big on building relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, she expected excellence, not just proficient proficiency. She expected excellence out of all of us um, and pushed all of us to really tap into our potential and, and maximize everything that we have. So, so those are the two, man, that are the, the ones that immediately come to mind. You, I, you don't know. I don't know if you know this, but you said shout out. And so Marianne Hatcher and sorry, Mark Hatcher and Marianne Norman. Shout out. <laughs> you didn't know that was coming, did you? Didn't know it was coming. Didn't know. Anyone who listens to this podcast knows it's like my favorite thing. And you said shout out. And I was like doing everything not to press the button when you said it. So I'm like, should I interrupt? Like, should I do it right now? Because that would have caught me off guard. I'd have been yeah. like. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta figure that. Well, it's I love I love the story. I, I actually love both the stories because I think a lot of times when you said, you know, um Marianne Norman building those relationships but had high expectations, that's the thing, right? You can go so much further when you know someone's got your back. And that's something I talk about all the time and think is so uh important. Um the the other, the thing that you said about uh Mark Hatcher, which I really appreciate, is that he did lose his cool at one point, but it was like if he did, you knew something was up. Right. Oh man, yeah. Like you, we all were like, "Wait, what?" And because yeah. I think some kids were arguing or something. So obviously, right. he was trying to, you know, like, he was trying to, like, you know, the line, the line. And, the so, and that that was something. So I actually, when I was thinking about this, uh, I I actually um, I, I ref basketball for years and years and years, right? And I remember this one. I remember this one game. Uh, we were talking. I actually, remember there's two coaches I can think of. There's one. Uh, this guy he yelled non-stop at the refs just he was yelling all the time yelling all the time and you just you just learn to like mute him out of your mind so nothing he said mattered you know what i mean and so like he would just yell 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 and you just kind of like you just kind of turn it off because you just get mad about everything right so i i mm -hmm. think about that a lot um i actually think a lot about that in relationships i think a lot about in that social media like if people are just kind of screaming all the time you're just like eh, i'm just gonna mute them and you know, like, like, but when they're, when you kind of pick and choose yet, I remember this one time we would always do these little conferences, um, before we would actually ref the game, like, Hey, what do we know about the coaches? And I remember this one time, this, the one ref, he was a senior ref to me. He said, look, this guy, he doesn't say anything, but if he does say something, that means you did, you screwed up. 
like he will not say anything but if he does you did something wrong so just so like you you paid attention to that person and i just love that because i think that's part of a time is that uh, we got to kind of pick and choose some of those times else we just kind of get we just become background noise right we just you know don't even so I, I i love that story and so you you are um you've done everything you're you're like pretty quick for administrator right and so i made yeah. the little doogie house joke before we even got on because right <laughs> you are yeah. and i told you i wasn't that young i got it yeah, do you yeah, actually understand? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, because there's my my daughter watches like the new Doogie Howser. I don't know if you know that. Okay. There's a there's a new Doogie Howser, right? Did I you know, know that? that? Yeah, there's a I new Doogie Howser. It's on the it's on Disney. So, uh, so Disney Plus. It is Disney Plus, right? Oh so, Lord, no! My son, right now, I'm stuck on uh -oh. is it PJ Masks. Spidey and his amazing friends. So there's a lot. There's I don't, a, he doesn't need another show lot. right now. There's a there's a lot, right? So uh yeah. so you you've taught, you've been a vice principal, you've been a principal, you work in central office right now. So thinking about your career, thinking about your role as an administrator, who's who is like an administrator that you think of that you know really had an impact on you and and and, and why and why do you say that? Got you. Um I think one that, that comes to mind, um good friend of mine. I mean, I consider him a brother. His name's Archie Freeman. Um, he was, he's a high school principal. He he's now, he's actually now at central office himself for his district. Um, I believe he's the chief like academic officer, but the way he like managed everything, like, even though I had the opportunity to, you know, talk to him a lot, like, like I said, even now I still consider him a great mentor and friend. Mm -hmm. But just from afar, just paying attention, because there's an art to delegate. There's an art to management. You know, a lot of folks just assume, oh, someone's in charge and they can just tell people what to do. And right. it's like, a lot of us know Ben Lucia, it's, it that's really not how it works. No, it's it's a lot of generating buy-in. It's a, it's a lot of um, politics that kind of comes into play. I mean, th there's so many different things that you really don't, expect and think about especially when you talk about someone going from the classroom into a lot of these leadership roles right because th there's a lot of things if you just think about for a lot of us who are in some of these roles when you're being prepped to be a teacher and then mm -hmm. when you're being prepped to be a, a principal or a director soup etc those are now some different skills being brought in and i remember just watching the the impact that he had and and the way he built relationships and the way folks would like, you know, run through a wall for him. I mean, mm -hmm. that was very inspiring and very effective leadership. So he's one that um, I don't even know if he realized how much of an impact that he had on me um, and just kind of seeing how he carried himself and so forth has really kind of helped me uh, model some of the things that I do. All right, Andre Freeman, if you're listening. Archie, Archie. Archie Freeman, sorry. Yeah, uh, Archie, just, Archie Freeman. Archie Freeman. Yeah, so that's uh, I, I love that. I actually, um, I'm I'm a huge basketball guy. You can see the Raptor stuff behind me. And one of the things, uh, Phil Jackson was probably one of my favorite coaches ever, just because, um, his like there's a lot of stuff that I, I learned from him, and you kind of running a school. And one of the things he actually did, uh, with his team was he wouldn't like have his team read the same book. He would actually have um, a book that he would give to each player that was something specific to that player. And he would have like he, the amount of knowledge that he had to kind of manage them. And so like people know him for like Kobe for Michael Jordan and things like that. But he, his work, what was really impressive, wasn't basically, you know, his top athletes. It was the person who never played and, and actually helping them see what their role was to success that they all felt they had massive roles to those teams to actually create something but that actually took really knowing each player helping bring out their strengths even though they might not you know have been in a position where they played as much as they thought when they were kids kind of thing like that so like when i listen to you that story and when you talk about archie i think that's that's something that's really powerful there is really kind of understanding the people that you serve, you know, bringing out the best in them. And then when you do that and people realize that, they, as you said, will go through walls for you, right? They'll do everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I absolutely love that. And so the last question, um, when you think about your teaching career 
and you know when you started and what you're doing now if you could go back and talk to your first year teacher self uh what advice would you give oh man it was only like oh. two years ago so like <laughs> right right it's like i it was like, I, it was I like wish. yesterday yeah get it. I, I i wish i um man that's what i would tell myself is and I always, and I've always been a firm believer in being on building relationships. Anybody that knows me knows that's like my go to that build relationships, build relationships. But even saying that, if I could go back and tell myself that that very first day, you know, getting ready for my first period, mm -hmm. walking in there all nervous, slow down and focus on building relationships because that that foundation that you build up front carries you. The rest of the year it carries you through the good times, the bad times. It, it, it just it sets the stage for everything. Um, mm -hmm. And and I and like, you know, now I've even got to the point where when, when I like I firmly believe building relationships is more important for teachers and all educators mm -hmm. than actually knowing your content. Because if you build a relationship mm -hmm. and you might fall short on something or you might teach something the wrong way. When you have that relationship there, the kids will, ah, oh, oh, yeah, you had a bad day. Okay, we understand. We'll, we'll go with you. Yeah. But you can know everything, and if you're not connecting it with the kids, you can be the smartest person in the world, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because your main role is not to only know what you're talking about, but make sure that the kid knows what you're right. talking about to learn it. So, yeah, definitely building relationships, building relationships. Yeah, and I really appreciate that focus on kind of like going slow to build those at the beginning. And when I first started teaching, uh, I remember, you know, first day of school, you have, we're like starting at like 9 a.m. So 9 a.m. till 10, 30 a.m. I'm like doing icebreakers, you know, getting to know the class, getting to know their names. Uh, they go for recess. I'm like, hey, here's the syllabus for the year. Like, we got to get going. And, and then you... You're because you're thinking like, I got so much stuff I got to get through. Like I got to get going on this right away. And then you have like classroom management stuff. You have kids who don't really trust you because they don't know you. And the reality of this is, is that when you start slow, like if I like some of the schools I worked with, they actually like encourage teachers. The whole first week should be about building connections with your, with your students. Yes. And then what happens a lot of people say, well, when, like, when am I going to teach content? The reality of this is you tend to not have classroom management issues the way you did before that you're spending less time on those things because you've built that relationship. So I just, I so appreciate that. And, um, I really appreciate that, especially honestly, uh, coming from you, Matt, because obviously when we, when we talk and when we talk before you are extremely accomplished, you have done incredible work already. Um, and obviously very gifted in the role of education and your first focus is relationships was probably why. Um, you, you've excelled in so many areas and I, I can't wait to dig into it more with you and, uh, and just hopefully, you know, pe more people connect with you. So, um, you can actually check out Matt's, uh, series. Um, I want to be, uh, in the link below and we're going to talk more about that on our next podcast, but Matt, it's like, like we, we should do this every week, right? Definitely, man. Definitely. We should, we should just like do it. Like, you know, the Matt and George show, right? Like we kind of, kind of have a two weeks in a row, right? I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I'll just be wandering around like where's matt you know maybe i'll exactly. be matt maybe matt i'll be matt's new archie i'll be his new friend when they <laughs> there you go Anyways, matt thanks for being on and everyone thank you so much for yeah. listening there you go man